Well, good afternoon. It's Thursday, the 19th of November. Welcome to Tech Tips Live. I'm Phil Mason, and I will be joined today by Ian Harris. Hello, hello. A couple of uh, housekeeping things here. As usual, we will be, we are recording this session, and we will have it available uh, probably later this week or early next week. We'll get it up on our website. Also, if you uh, have been doing these for a while, we're getting familiar with Ring Central, a little different interface than we used to have with WebEx, but for most all of you, I think at the bottom of the screen, you've got the Q&A, and uh, if you have any questions, please put them in there. We also will do, I've got a couple just quick polls to ask a couple questions today, and I think I'll do a, a better job than uh, last month. I didn't close them and display them to all of you. Also, we've had a few people from time to time have some trouble uh, because their, their company's network security is really tight and had some trouble with ports and this and that on their uh, system. So feel free to contact me afterwards, or I know some people ended up just calling in and then they contacted me. Ring Central at their website has good information for what ports need to be open for webinars and uh, for one company uh, in Canada, I did a little test webinar for them and opened it up and they were able to get things opened up. So we want as many people to be able to participate as possible, so please don't hesitate to ask. And finally, we will be meeting, oh, in a week or two to plan our schedule for 2021. If there are specific topics that you would like Tech Tips Live to go into, maybe something we've touched on, but maybe you want us in more detail or something new, please, please give me those suggestions. We'd love to hear from you, the audience. We want to have things that are topical and relevant to you. And so email, you can email me, phil at hersler.com. Uh, you could, you know, you can hit a lot of our, our typical ones, sales or info or support and uh, say you have a Tech Tips Live suggestion and those will get to me. So certainly would appreciate your input. So Ian, why don't you go ahead and advance us? Yep, I think we pretty much know all this. We're here to talk about adding new devices. So last month it was all about, you know, doing bulk imports and, and things like that. Now it's about adding a new device. And sometimes that's a little bit in the uh, import game as some of these devices create files, but we'll go into more specifics or Ian will talk about those things and we will look at how, uh, how that works. So I've got a first uh, quick poll for everybody. Uh, how do you get data into GainSeeker in general? So if you would please, just kind of curious in general how much manual entry versus external devices. Okay. <clears throat> Got nine responses. Like to get a couple more here. Okay, got another, looks like maybe somebody having, like I said, uh, we did have someone else say last time the polls did not show up for them. So I got another, another vote for the external devices. Give it another couple seconds. Okay. So, in this small unscientific survey. Uh, we have about an even split here. Some are still 100% manual, and that's not completely surprising. We have some that majority is manual, but they're doing some with external devices. And then on the other side, we have companies that are much more uh, majority of things going in digitally. All right. Ian, you want to go ahead and move me to the next slide, please. I've been showing this pretty much every one of our Tech Tips Live for the last few months. And again, it's 
that good reminder of how our platform works, how we can be the middleware between a lot of things, not just kind of a typical SPC program. So with that, I have another question for everybody. And let's see, how do I get to my second question? <laughs> Well, that's how I do it. All right, here we go. So thinking about industry and quality 4.0, uh, where is your company at in your efforts to digitize? All right, kind of having a spread across the spectrum. Nobody's willing to jump into my attempt at some humor there at the last selection. We know the reality is there are a lot of places that still do like paper a lot. Okay. So here we have the results. We have in the middle, middle of the road, the majority have digitized a number of processes. Some are just getting started and a couple of you are moving forward as fast as you can. And none of you like paper a lot. So that's a good thing. That's, uh, that's what we like to see. I guess that's why you're already uh, clients of Hertzler Systems and using GameSeeker. So that's, that's fantastic. All right. Well, Ian, you ready to take things away and uh, talk a little bit here today about how we get data directly into Gain Seeker, some of the uh, tips that people need to keep in mind as they do that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, thank you. What we're going to be talking about is mostly the kinds of questions that you want to ask when you want to start collecting data from an external source um, or when you want to change how you're collecting that data. And so to do that, we're going to go over the types of devices, just some of them. There are a lot, um, but I'm only going to cover a couple. And then how the data actually gets into GainSeeker, which is the most important part of this, because um, that is going to determine basically everything that follows it. And then we're gonna hit a little bit on what the difference is between getting a new kind of data input device versus replacing an existing one, because the questions are a little bit different depending on what one of those things you're doing. Um, so for types of devices, uh, we're mostly familiar with these already. These are things like micrometers and spectrometers and all kinds of ometers. Um, barcode readers, scales, basically anything that can take external data and digitize it. Um, I'm including interfaces here because a lot of times we have more than one external device connected to a machine that can't handle that many connections. Um, and as the slide notes, we are sort of a reseller for these things uh, for micro ridge cables and gateway interfaces. Uh, so if you have a need to get any of those or get replacements or something, you can uh, give our sales department a call and they'll help you. Um, well, we also include CMMs in here and OPC connected devices and database connected devices. So there's actually a pretty wide range of different kinds of devices. Um, and for the most part, I've artificially broken these into two groups, direct and indirect. The, uh, this is kind of an artificial division. It's not an official one. It's just a useful way of thinking about it. So if the, relationship we're talking about is between gain seeker and the external data coming in. The difference here is which of these two, uh, which between gain seeker and the data is active and which one's passive. So for direct input, it's kind of the data that's active and gain seeker is waiting to capture it. So this would be stuff that's coming in through a serial port usually or a keyboard wedge. Um, you know, this would be a, the person who's sitting in front of the computer putting something on a scale and hitting a button. A gain seeker, the application will pause and wait for the measurement to come in before continuing. So that's kind of a direct 
way of getting information in there. Um, and typically, these are a lot closer to plug and play when you implement them because inspections and templates have built-in ways of dealing with this. And inspections especially have a, a pretty nice GUI for doing it. And then the other method is indirect. And this is typically when the data has already been captured and stored somewhere, but not in GainSeeker. And GainSeeker is supposed to go and get it and bring it in. So this would be um, reading from an external database. A lot of people use stuff like JDE, um, and we can go in there and get that. Uh, reading from files. So if you have a machine that puts out Excel files or CSVs, as long as we know where they are, GainSeeker can go in and collect the data from them. And uh, same thing for OPC servers where information gets stored at different tags. And as long as we know what those tags are, again, there's, there are built-in methods, especially in Python, for getting that. Um, these often require a bit more work to implement just because there are so many different ways you could do it, so many different possible configurations for, let's say, an Excel file, for instance. Um, but they're also not typically too intensive. It's just a little bit more work than our sort of plug-and-play RS-232 reading. Ian, I, I want to just throw in on the uh, on the direct. You you had talked about somebody pushing a button to send a reading, just so that people are are clear that GainSeeker can also trigger readings, pull readings from a device as well, too. Uh, yeah, that's very true. If if the device can be triggered externally, um, then you can program the inspection or the template to send the trigger to the device, um, and this is often used when you want to wait to capture something from a, let's say a scale until the, the scale is no longer fluctuating after something's been placed on it. Um, GainSeeker will read what the scale's doing live and when it senses that the scale is, is finished changing, it'll send the capture command, basically. Um, or just capture itself. So I have a couple of examples here. Um, the direct, the direct ones, like I said, these are pretty common. So the top one is one that we see a lot. In fact, I just talked about it twice. Operator using a scale to automatically add weight information um, so that they don't have to, to type stuff in and maybe accidentally hit the wrong key. Um, another example that we see quite a bit is somebody using like a barcode scanner at the very end of the line to scan a barcode and connect the weight of a finished package to something in a database um, so that you can store your MAV information, help you reduce the amount of overpack that you have. Uh, and you could, uh, you could obviously type this information in by hand if you wanted to, but if you don't need to, then why? And then for indirect, uh, I'm gonna stick with the CMM for most of this talk. And a good example of how indirect stuff works would be a technician running, say, 10 or 20 or 30 products through one of these machines. And at the end of it, the machine will automatically create and save an Excel file with the measurements and the traceability, so the, the operator and the date time and what the product number is, all that kind of stuff, to a specific location. And then GainSeeker will usually have a script in Python that will scan that location periodically for, for new files. So when the CMM creates the new file, GainSeeker will scan it every five or 15 minutes or something, and when it finds it, it'll process it. And then either destroy that file or um, archive it, so move it to a different location, which we would recommend. So, I said that this is mostly gonna be about what kinds of questions do you want to ask? And that starts with whether you are adding new equipment or replacing your old equipment. And if you're adding new equipment, one of the first questions you wanna, you're gonna to wanna to ask and answer, obviously, is, is this direct or indirect? And you can use whatever terminology you want. But basically, the idea is, should GainSeeker pause what it's doing and wait for you to put data in, or do you expect GainSeeker Gain seeker to periodically go out and find this data. So if it's direct, so this would be, again, scale, barcodes, scanners, calipers, stuff like that, then you should know how the device is connected, how it's physically connected to the machine. Um, it could be a keyboard wedge, USB, whatever. And you're also going to want to know what the data looks like when it comes in. So 
different devices send data back different ways. Normally it's a string and it could send multiple readings back. So here I've sort of pretended for these two examples that what it's sending back is like a lot number and an item code and a measurement. So if it's doing this, Gain Seeker needs to be told how to separate those numbers and which of the numbers corresponds to which of those things. And once we know that, it's trivial to do, but it's, it's vitally important that we know this. And in this case, the manual is your best friend. The, uh, the manual of whatever the device is should tell you exactly how it spits data out when it does it. On the other hand, if you're doing indirect stuff with like a uh, CMM, the questions you're gonna wanna answer are how is data exported from the device? So what format is it in when it comes out? Excel um, or CSV, or is it going out to a server? Or is it going into a database even? Because they do that sometimes. Uh, and you wanna know where that data is being made available. So what I mean by this is very often the machine that's, the, the computer that's connected to the machine isn't necessarily one that's running GainSeeker, but it will be networked. And so the machine should push data out to a network location most of the time that GainSeeker can access. So that, because if GainSeeker can't access that folder wherever it is, we obviously can't pull that data in. So we need to know where it's going. We need to know what the file looks like. So if we're talking about say an Excel file, we need to know which columns correspond to which traceability values, which data values, which one's the part number, which one's the date time, that sort of thing. And then this is a really big one. In fact, both of these, these last two points are, who's gonna be responsible for the settings and configuration of the device is just a way of saying there needs to be good communication between the gain seeker team and whoever is responsible for maintaining the device itself. Gain seeker will have no problem reading in the file as long as it's in the format you expect. But if the person who's responsible for maintaining the device, say, adds a traceability column and doesn't communicate that to the gain seeker team, gain seeker is going to try to read the old version instead of the new version. It's a very easy thing to change, usually, a um, couple of minutes, but you do need to have that conversation so that you don't lose data uh, before you realize that you need to make that change. And then the last one, get output examples from the vendor. That's the best possible way to see exactly what the file is going to look like when it comes in. Yeah, I know we had uh, a situation. There, there, there's so many measuring devices and so many things that are built specially for different companies. And uh, we had a fixture where that measuring device and that output, it came from a com company, I believe in New Zealand or Australia. And, uh, it was a little bit of a trick getting the output examples from the vendor. Uh, took, took a little time and uh, some time differences and things like that. But as much of that information as you all can have before you talk to us or you're working on things, the better off the project will be. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And most of the time, most of the time that's not an issue and the vendor will work really closely with you to, uh, to make sure that you get that information and that we get that information because it just makes everyone happier. Uh, sorry, clicked on the wrong thing there. Okay, so then the other option here, if you're not getting a new device, is what if you're replacing a device? This one happens fairly often too. Um, if you are just replacing one device with another exactly the same device, it's usually not a big deal. You want to make sure that the settings are the same um, on the device. But otherwise, if you have if you have two of the exact same device and one of them can communicate, then Barring some kind of a hardware failure, the second one should also be able to communicate. Um, if there are changes, again, you just want to make a note of what they are and react accordingly or change this, the new one to match. Um, <clears throat> you're going to want to make sure also that you review the settings in the old equipment. And this is going to be really important, especially if you're going from an old device to a, let's say, an updated model. So the same line, but the, you know, five-year newer version. Um, the COM port settings, if you're doing serial stuff, you're gonna wanna make sure those are the same. If gain is expecting something on COM port one and you plug in a new device and it's trying to talk on COM port three, it's going to look like the, let's say it's a scale, it's gonna look like the scale's working and it's gonna look like gain seekers just sitting there waiting for something to happen. 
Uh, so you want to make sure that the COM ports match what they're supposed to. Um, and to that end, the gain seeker settings also need to match the device settings. And custom software, this is, this is mostly in here because we had an issue uh, with this relatively recently where somebody went from one version of a scale to a newer model. It's the same, again, same line, but newer model of that scale. And someone at that company had created a custom piece of software that sort of sat between the scale and gain seekers. So when the scale sent information, it went to that software first, that software did something and then sent it into gain seeker. And unfortunately, because it was an executable, we couldn't see inside of that piece of software. And so when they updated the scale, it no longer worked with it. So if you do have custom software or custom coding or some kind of custom pathing between the, your device and gain seeker, you just wanna make a note, a very clear note of exactly what's happening there. Um, just in case you do need to, you do need to change it in the future. All right. So oftentimes when you're setting this stuff up, you don't necessarily have access to the equipment. This is especially going to be true of the uh, more direct things that are trying to talk via a USB or a serial port or something like that. Um, and a USB is a serial device, as was pointed out to me when I was building this. So these, this is just a short list of some tools that you can use to basically either test a build. So if you're making a new inspection and it's supposed to, to see something on COM port three, you can set up a uh, hyper terminal and COM zero COM to send stuff through COM port three and then test it without actually having a device, a physical device attached. And it can also help you troubleshoot. So if you think that something should be speaking on a, on a particular COM port, you can still use something again like hyperterminal and com zero com to directly send information into a com port and test that in gain seeker so you'll know when you use these devices that something is coming in where it's supposed to and this can help point to either gain seeker or the device as the culprit for you say not getting a specific reading that you think you should be getting um, and if you're using micro rich devices cannot stress enough if you can get com test serial definitely do it it's very useful and that is all that I had as far as the presentation goes. So if you have questions, um, go ahead and post them. And Phil, if somebody has a question, interrupt me. Um, we've got those, those three questions that we came up with beforehand because those are fairly common things. So I think yeah. I could just go through at least one of those. Yeah. And just also for everybody who's on the call, you know, we part of our idea here was if any of you call in for support, what are the questions Ian, Ian is going to ask you? And we just kind of went through that diagnostic process today. He's going to say, okay, well, is this something new? Is this something you're replacing? And, and so on and, and through that whole process. Um, here's one, Ian, and uh, you, you can respond, or I, I think I've got a pretty good idea here too. Somebody's asking, said, I, I didn't see anything specifically about MT Connect. Uh, can can Gain Seeker connect, use, connect with MT Connect, use MT Connect. Do you want to comment on that? Or I, I'm prepared to do that if you're not. Oh, yeah, no, go for it. So, yes, we do uh, connect with MT Connect. Uh, it is it, one of the things that they... They, they kind of sell themselves as being unique, but it really is a very similar to OPC, I'm sorry, and uh, uses HTTP for some of the communication. So we, we have a couple significant clients using that already, and uh, that is, that's not a problem. All right, any other questions out there? Q&A down at the bottom? Why don't you go ahead, we're, uh, why don't you go ahead and flip that next slide in. We've got three, kind of things that we thought about. Yeah, absolutely. You want, I guess you, you have the preview, you can read them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's fine, I'll just do this. Um, so the first one is, does support cover adding new devices? And the answer is absolutely. Um, the We're always available to answer questions, so if you are in the process of adding one and it's not quite working, give us a call. Um, or if you have preliminary questions, like what are our suggestions, what kinds of things do you need to consider? 
more than happy to help. Um, if you have a more design oriented thing that you're dealing with, like um, implementing a new CMM, I'm talking about this because we're doing this right now, uh, then that the best route for that's going to be going through our technical project managers who have done that exact thing before. So they are going to be able to tell you how much work it's going to be and it's you the the right information from us and make sure that you get the right information from the vendor so we'll do everything from regular support to project work all right i do have a question a specific question here and i'm not sure this may be one we'll have to follow up on go for it have you heard about issues with newer magna mics no specifically no okay uh, but if you are having um, an issue with it, send an email to support because one of the things that'll happen is like right now it's, it's totally possible that somebody who isn't me and works at Hertzler has heard of specific issues. Um, but yeah. since they're not here, I'm the one who's answering. If you send an email to support and say, I'm doing it and I haven't heard it, I will forward that to everybody. <laughs> it gets quite yeah. annoying for them. I'm sure. But yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll make uh, sure that we find the answer. So to our, to our uh, uh, listener that asked the question there, let's, uh, if you could give us any more detail, you can do it here in the chat. Or like I said, you can email support. We'd be happy to hear about that and uh, try and help you out on that. But we don't, Ian and I today right now, and uh, as well as the various other Hertzler people who are bombarding us with chat messages, <laughs> we, we don't have anything specific on that. All right, why don't you keep on going there, uh, Ian, on, on your questions. Okay. All right, so then um, that second one, how you automate data collection from a particular device. So I said that you can, but how do you actually do it? It depends on um, whether you're doing indirect or direct. If you're doing direct, uh, one of the things, again, that, that Phil mentioned is you can send a command to the scale from Gainseeker uh, so, or whatever the device is just to further reduce the likelihood, uh, just to further reduce the likelihood that there's gonna be any kind of a um, user error. And if you're talking about the more indirect method, uh, typically the way that we do that is with a scheduled task. So we tell, we create a task for Windows and we tell Windows to activate a gain seeker file that scans location every five minutes or 15 minutes or whatever it is. Um, and waits for there to be a change in that location, waits to see a new file. So it's a combination of using Gain Seekers automation and then, uh, like I said, the Windows Task Scheduler. Yeah. Um, I, I want to circle back to your first question there of does support cover adding new devices? It support will, we will help clients as they do that. We won't do the whole project. I mean, I, I think there, we, we want to maybe clarify that a little bit. And I don't know how you want to say that, Ian, but for bigger projects of adding something completely new and doing, say, new inspections or things like that, those, that's project work and that, that's outside of the scope of just general support. Yeah, you're right. And I, I probably did quite phrase that um, clearly enough, but when I say project work, I do generally mean paid project work. So if it's a, if it's like a, 20 minute call where you're going, Hey, I have this scale hooked up and I followed all this stuff in the help document and it's not quite showing up. Yeah. We're, we'll, we're more than happy to do that. And we will answer questions about the actual, um, again, if we have recommendations or not, but if it comes to spending an extended amount of time setting something up, uh, so setting up a big new device or adding a whole part to a workflow where we're going to be spending significant time, then yeah, we, we would consider that a paid service and we'll still do it. Um, it's not that we're not going to, but that would just be part of that paid services sequence. Okay. Any other questions at this point? We did get a little bit more information uh, about the, the Magna Mics and we'll, we will follow up on that. I think if you look at the, uh, the chat there, Ian, you can see that. All right, folks, we are coming down here to the end of our time together. Ian, you want to get me to my last slide, please? We have one more Tech Tips Live. 
this year and it is mid mid ish december and we will be showing some of the newest features from gain seeker 9.4 our new release and of course as i said before the recording of this tech tips live if uh you have some cohort some people at your company you'd like to see it or like to make available to them we will have it posted here shortly and also if you have ideas if you have topics for 2021 please uh, give them to me. I'm always looking for ideas and uh, as we advertise or decide what we're going to do and, and start promoting that, uh, certainly we want to have topics that are relevant to you and helpful to you. So thank you so much for joining us today and at other Tech Tips Live and all the best. Have a fantastic Thanksgiving folks and everybody stay safe out there. Yep, thanks everyone.